She is the small business ombudsman here, the inaugural one, in fact, for Australia. It is, of course, Kate Carnell. Kate, welcome to CR Live this afternoon. Hi, Chris. And look, there's no doubt at all that you are incredibly busy in your role as the small business ombudsman uh, at the moment, championing uh, the cause for small business here in Australia. These are pretty tough times for any small business owner. What are the big challenges that you see uh, in your role that we probably need to be a bit more aware of than we aren't at the moment? Look, Chris, I think some of the things people forget is there's 2.3 million small businesses in Australia, that's trading small businesses, and they employ half the workforce. So they're incredibly important. But, you know, through this COVID uh, pandemic, this crisis, it's small businesses that have borne the brunt of the problem. Because let's be fair, it's industries like um, restaurants, uh, um, retail, the arts, events, you know, I could go through them that have been that have had all sorts of, of issues, like having to close down literally overnight. Mm. Now, for those businesses, uh, they're they're struggling. You know, most small businesses have between twenty one and twenty eight days worth of capital, so they don't have much. If revenue dries up overnight, you can't keep the business afloat for very long. So, things like JobKeeper have been really yep. important. But I tell you what, the biggest issue for them right now um, is cash flow yep. and focusing on what life looks like post-COVID. Because yep. I tell you what, any business who thinks it's the same, you know, we can just go back to what it was like, mm. is kidding themselves. And I think, think the fact you and I are talking together um, yep. as we are right now just tells you, you know, the world's changed and business yep. has to change with it. It does. And I think uh, despite and in spite of all of the, the the horrific situations that we've seen come out of this, I mean, Australia, Kate, is doing pretty well globally, wow. if I look at how we've dealt with this. And regardless of anyone's political persuasions here, put those all to one side. I, we've got a government here that I, in my absolute view, um, believe genuinely are doing absolutely right by Australia. And let's be honest, this is a situation that nobody could have planned for. Nobody would want to lead a country through. Um, <laughs> No. It is absolute <laughs> chaos. And in fact, you, I believe, if I remember rightly, I'm, I'm searching through my memory banks here, but you were once the chief minister uh, for the ACT. So you have really been in government uh, in some very senior positions. What do you think going ahead beyond COVID uh, now that government really needs to keep laser focused on for small business? What's the big ticket items that they have to keep that on? Well, first and foremost, let's hope one of the things that happens off the back of this is the government keeps the national cabinet together. That's yep. that entity of the prime, the prime minister, the uh, the premiers, the chief ministers getting together regularly uh, to set direction uh, for the nation, um, both at state and federal level. Now, you know the problem with a with a federation is we've had a bit of a breakdown between. Uh, states and federal government. We've had different rules in every state. Mm. We don't even have a standard national transport rule approach. So, so if you drive a truck from Perth to Brisbane, mm. you've got different rules for loading, different rules for all sorts of things the whole way through. So some of the challenges is getting rid of the unnecessary uh, mm. red tape, the things that get in the way of productivity, and I believe that can be done by keeping national cabinet together so that the states and the, and the territories will work together with a focus, hopefully a laser focus, <laughs> on, on productivity. But for the federal government, the major issues at the moment are, are allowing small businesses to get on with the job of employing and growing. So yep. getting rid of unnecessary red tape, unnecessary regulations, making it easier to employ. So... We need to fix our tax system. Yep. Um, I think we can uh, get rid of things like fringe benefit tax, yep. uh, uh, get rid of, um, have instant asset write-off, get rid of depreciation. Yep. And in industrial relations, we just need to get rid of a system that's got, the Fair Work Act's got 960 sections, quarter of a million words. Wow. And then we've got 122 awards as well. Small wow. businesses have got no show to get that system right 
and we've got to come up with a system that allows our 2.3 million small businesses a capacity to employ more people. I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb here, uh, Kate, and I'm going to um, make you the new Prime Minister for Australia um, today. So your first job, if you were Prime Minister, um, what would you be doing in, in this situation here? Actually, you know, you asked me the first job, you know, a chunk of the things I've just said are doable and, yep. you know, I'd do them. But my first job would be to say, okay, we're going to purchase, we're going to use our really significant purchasing power yep. and we're going to purchase the significant amounts of goods and services that the federal government uh, purchases every year and we're going to purchase them from Australian companies with, with a particular focus on SMEs. Yep. Now, we haven't done that in the past because of World Trade Organisations, Free Trade, Open Borders. Yep. All of that's really fine except yep. right now, we need to focus on getting the Australian economy Absolutely. flying. And we and what small businesses tell me is they want work. They don't want yep. grants. Yep. I mean, they'll put, you know, grants are fine to keep them afloat, but they yep. want business. And we're not just talking about what we call it, the sandwich and paperclip procurement. We're talking yep. about IT, construction, yeah. a whole range yep. of things. That we've got businesses in this country that can do this work Yep. We don't need to rely on multinational or purchasing yep. offshore. And I think, look, I've been having heaps of conversations, Kate, with uh, everyone from established businesses like Hames Paint. I was there with them. Uh, yeah, and, they're and, fantastic. And, I love them. Aren't they? I, I was there with the, the family talking about um, how they've responded to this situation over the last few weeks. Amazing story there. I'm off to see Brown Brothers uh, next week to meet the Brown right. family and talk to them about what they're doing with the future. But I think there's been a real uh, absolute re resounding support for we need to be really laser focused again, to use that word, on Australian business, supporting that to really kickstart our economy. But the thing that's come out that I've kind of been a little bit surprised about is that there's this real desire to be very innovative around manufacturing again. And that doesn't mean bring back yep. car manufacturing or the big <laughs> no. old stuff, but how can Australia, in your view, be a real powerhouse when it comes to innovative manufacturing for our future here? Do you have a view on that? Look, absolutely. And it's been great to hear the government, Karen Andrews, who is the Minister for Industry particularly, but also in the defence space, Melissa Price, mm. um, uh, talking about how we can make manufacturing and particularly high-tech manufacturing really fly in Australia. We've mm. seen pretty small businesses um, pivot to be able to produce ventilators really mm. quickly and, and, and other PPE requirements. It shows you Australian businesses can do um, all sorts of um, really innovative things if we give them the capacity to do so. Mm. And it was interesting. I'm involved in um, CDIC, which is um, in the defence industry space, trying to get more small businesses, small to medium businesses, into the defence supply chain. Mm. And I was on a call this morning and one of the um, manufacturers that's on that group uh, was saying, you know, it's interesting, He's, he does a lot of work in South Korea, South Korea has 26% of their uh, their economy is in manufacturing. Mm. Um, back in 1975, 26% of Australian manufacturing was wow. in uh, uh, was, uh, of the workforce was in manufacturing as well. Mm. So a bit line ball with South Korea back then. Yep. Now we're at six percent, and they're still at 26%. And our wages are very similar. So it shows that you know we can have a look at other countries that have managed to focus on, you know, getting their innovative manufacturers, mm. giving them the capacity to grow. We've got the people here. We've got the innovation here. We've just got to give them the capacity to grow their products here. We invent things well, but then we don't take it to the next phase of actually manufacturing in Australia. And, you know, just using South Korea as an example, they have no natural resources mm. and we've got everything. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, we can do this. We just have to focus on making it happen.
Do you think we get enough support from the community when it comes to um, supporting local manufacturing? I mean, I've been out there um, meeting with small business owners from cafes to the likes of, like we just talked about, Hames Paint, and I've been up to Ballarat to meet businesses out there and see what they're doing. And one message has come out there, the support through COVID-19 has just been unfathomable. I mean, I've even had emotional reactions where business owners have cried in front of me on camera going, I just couldn't believe the response we've had. Do you think, I mean, across the country we're, we're seeing that and will that continue even after COVID-19? Um, Chris, I'm on the board of the Australian Made campaign, you know, the little triangle yeah. with the kangaroo. Yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> you know, we found at the Australian Made campaign that we have never seen anything like this. Yeah, wow. Even in the middle of COVID, we've got huge numbers of new members. Uh, the uh, interest in um, our website, in our social media space, you know, we've had 600% increases. Australians are saying they want to buy Australian, Australian goods, Australian services. They, under, they don't want to be reliant um, on offshore procurement anymore. Um, so they want it to be a balance. We've got to be able to stand on our own two feet. So Australians are saying categorically, as the people you were talking to, mm. that, you know, this, this is actually a total change in attitude. Yep. I think in Australia, we've been a bit maybe fat and happy, Lovely. you know, sort of, yeah. you know, yep. that we've sort of just gone with the flow. Yep. And, you know, if you can get cheap stuff from overseas, that's good. Um, I think we've changed and let's hope that we all now embed this mm. in the way we operate. Um, my um, executive officer needed to buy some new socks <laughs> um, because Canberra's going to be cold. Um, it took her eight shops before she could actually find socks that were made in Australia, but wow. she found them okay. um, and she found them. They're made from merino wool in Australia. So if you make the effort, you can Absolutely. find Australian made and they're great products, high quality, great products. Absolutely. Might pay a, a f might pay a bit more, but hey, it's worth it. Absolutely. And um, one of my big passion projects is convincing and making sure my mother-in-law follows that same trajectory that when she's out, she's not just buying uh, the cheap tin tomatoes and she's looking for the ones with the Australian uh, label on. Because that, that's critical to our future and everyone needs to be doing that. And I think there's never been a time where our communities and societies are behind this now. And the challenge for all of us is to make sure we continue that through. Australians do incredibly well. The last thing I want to leave uh, with you on... Um, Kate, is you were uh, at one time also the CEO for Beyond Blue here in Australia. Yes. Mental health is going to be an enormous topic for us uh, going into the rest of this year and also the year after. What do you see some of the things that we perhaps aren't as focused on in that area and we need to be very careful on? Um, Chris, if you have a think about, you know, small business generally for a mm. while, those 2.3 million I was talking about earlier, um, in January... Um, or late last year. I mean, there's certainly businesses that were badly affected by the bushfire, so had a bad December, January. Mm. But for most businesses, they had a plan. Even those affected by bushfires, they were thinking, oh, we'll get through this and, you know, we know what we're going to do from there. Mm. Um, so they went from having a plan, knowing yeah. where they were going, know what their business looks like, to being closed or almost mm. closed overnight um, or having no customers overnight. As you said earlier, no one could have planned for this. This is a level of stress that, you know, no, no normal person could, could deal with. And remember, for lots of small businesses, their house is the security on their business mm. loan. So if the business falls over, there is a fairly good chance they'll lose their house as well, their home. You know, I, nobody is superman or superwoman. And I think yeah. the message for small businesses or other people who have lost their job who never imagined they'd be anywhere near Centrelink in their mm. lives and all of a sudden are having to, you know, navigate that system is to understand that one in four Australians experience mental health um, situations at some point in their lives in the best of times. And this is not the best of times. No, so true. There's a website that my office has put together because it's a bit of a passion for me, called mm. My Business Health. So yep. people Google My Business Health, you'll get a website associated to 
uh, the Australian Small Business and Family Enterprise Ombudsman site. And what we've tried to do there is help small businesses with tools that help them with, with cash flow, with mm. the grants that are available from levels of government, all that stuff, but also what you can do to look after yourself. Getting through COVID is going to be tough. But I tell you what, if you don't look after your own mental health and that of your family, and make sure you're keeping an eye on your staff as well, then it's going to be very hard for your businesses to survive and for your family to survive as well. And we need that to happen. So except you're not Superman or Superwoman, you need to look after your own mental health and there is significant support available to do that. My Business Health, it's got some great uh, places to go. Beyond Blue has a 24-7 helpline where you'll speak to a mental health um, support person if you wanted, if you can, if you want to do that, go onto the Beyond Blue website or My Business Health mm. and accept that you have a responsibility to look after your own mental health. Otherwise, you can't look after others or your business.